tonight, we are going to explore a very curious problem. And it's called the great dream. There are some. In one sense, however, every dream is great because it meets the specific needs of an individual. Now, what is it about great dreams that qualifies for that greatness? Well, there is a particular issue I'd like to bring up. And that's this issue. We have provided a certain amount of evidence to suggest that there is a good basis for claiming that the dreams we get fit the situation that we are in. and that there is a relationship between the struggles we have in our own mind and the struggles we encounter in our external world. That is to say, they are analogous. We then went on to say, for dreams to have a particular benefit to man, it must mean that when we have a dream, we can study it and get an insight into the dream, and that should give us, therefore, an insight into two worlds, both. Now, for an insight to be possible, it means that the construction of the dream the very construction of the dream must have been an amazing feat because we were saying that the images in the dreams, by that I mean the figures, the images or the figures in dreams have a particularly personal history. And we have to then discover the particular personal history that makes these dreams the carriers of a certain kind of meaning, which with others can fit together into a pattern to communicate something extremely important for our own development. So therefore, these images are picked up, they are connected with themes. They are connected with themes. And it's our job, our task, to find a way to consider or to meditate on these dreams, as we spoke about last week, to try to grasp their meaning. For the dream to be able to do that, it means then there's something in us that we can access that can go back into our personal history and pick out these items, much to our surprise, because for quite a while we don't even recognize that they are drawn from our personal history, and it has all of the associations and meanings attached to it. So therefore, Whatever is constructing the dream clearly knows us much better than we know ourselves. Right. Knows ourselves intimately. Now here's a question though. That means that each of us has this kind of ability or agent that can do this. Are dreams then, in response to a personal situation only? Is there, here's our question then, is there anything about dreams that is, uh, that is transpersonal? Is there anything about dreams that goes beyond the boundaries of what we call and know to be ourselves, and tap into something beyond that, 
and tap into something far beyond that, and yet it equally has significance to us, but it isn't drawn from our own personal history. If so, then whatever we call the dream master goes beyond our own personal boundaries and reaches to something beyond ourselves. And therefore, if that's correct, that means there should be some basis for considering the dream master not only to be a transpersonal phenomena, but maybe it goes beyond that. And perhaps we can say it encounters also the transcendent. Now, if it, if it is both transpersonal and transcendent, then it's through the study of dreams that we can become aware of something very significant to us that operates for our advantage that goes beyond ourselves to tap into a dimension of experience that is very significant to us and meaningful and that has a long-term direction for our lives. Now, if it's a great dream, using Carl Jung's terms or others, that means it goes beyond the boundaries not only of the person but it goes beyond the boundaries of the family, the clan, the culture. And therefore, for someone to claim that something that goes beyond those things and yet can benefit us, as the claim was made just a short while ago, then it has to be shown in way, what way that can be said to be true, because it certainly doesn't appear to be that you can find meaning beyond this arena. So, <clears throat> if there are dreams that are transpersonal, transcendent, open us up into a range of experience that goes beyond these boundaries, and yet can be most most significant to us, and therefore, key word, of course, always, and benefit us in the highest way, then we should be able to say, by heavens, there is a way in which we can support the notion that the dream master, the master of our dreams, not only knows us and what's particular advantage to us, but also, in the long-range view, can contribute insights into our own destiny, particularly, as well as, let's even go further, into the very question of the destiny of man. Now, the higher I go, of course, <laughs> the greater the experience and the dream must be. Well, I'd like to introduce a, a dream now that is only seven or eight sentences long. And I worked with uh, a young man uh, just a couple of nights ago who had this dream. And it's a short dream, and I'm going to share it with you. And it is a great dream, but I would like to add something to this idea. A great dream can also give us and disclose a great problem. Now that means it's going to include everything we've said, but it's also going to turn around and give us and present to us the very nature of our most fundamental problem most fundamental. Let me do it again. All right. There are some dreams we're calling great. They're great because they benefit us on the highest level. 
They go beyond our personal world, our family, clan, culture. They are transpersonal, transcendent, and they contribute to the greatest issue, the destiny of man. While they do that, great dreams can also simultaneously within the same dream be able to present the dreamer in a very, very simple and beautiful way their most fundamental problem. So therefore it's going to include the transcendent, transpersonal, and the personal all in one dream in eight sentences. Is that a pretty good show? Okay. Before I go into it, any questions about it? Good. Good. All right. Let's do it. I'll read it. And this is the way it was given to me. All right. This man had three dreams and he wanted to see how the three fit together because he wanted to see the theme that ran through it the way we did the other night. And so it had a good talk. As a consequence, there's some material, of course, that became clear that's not part of the original material, but which I'll recall and fill in. But first, the statement itself. Now, often I ask people not to use real names in dreams, but abbreviate or change the name unless it's very significant to them that they mention the person's identity. So that's why. D and I are sitting in K and J's living room, talking to them about something, school, movie, then the, room, then the room becomes very vivid. Things take on a different quality, stronger, more real. Then everything becomes white, a pure white, very powerful. Lasts momentarily. Then it stops and I turn to D. Things are still kind of vivid. And I turn to D and say, I want to examine something a little more closely, and I get up to leave. End of the dream. All right. And since you know how good I am at art, obviously this has been another opportunity to play Leonardo. I'll read it again. D and I are sitting in K and J's living room. Right. And of course, being educated, they have a cup of cappuccino. D and I are in J and K's living room. Not talking about Sonic School movie. Then the room becomes very vivid. The thing, things take on a different quality, stronger, more real. Then everything becomes pure white, very powerful. Momentarily, then it stops. I turn to D. I turn to D, and I say, I want to examine. Something a little more closely. End 
and I get up and leave. That's the whole room. Now, on reflection, on reflection, what happened is that I got the young man to talk more about it because that's the first step in every dream analysis. You want the person to explore it more fully. And so he added the following features. This experience was not only intense and brilliant, ecstatic, uh, luminous, um, called it penetrating, yet in a certain way he could stand apart from it, even though it had all of this power it was overwhelming. It was the most powerful and beautiful and meaningful experience he claimed he had ever had. As you can see, as he talked about it, the content of the dream was opened up and he was able to give more details about it. And it is, in fact, an ecstatic, blissful experience, luminous. Now, we talked and I asked, where is the problem? Because dreams should give you, right, should be revealing something, something that you don't know. Where is the difficulty? First, he said that it was so important for him to have that dream, nothing like that ever happened to him, of this intensity before. He now realizes that that's the thing he wants to master and to study. And when he said, uh, I want to go up to leave, it was with the thought that he was going to go on and search for its meaning. It's... Uh, He's, a philo he's into philosophy, classic philosophy. He recognized that this is part of a classic vision called the pure light of being. Which I should add, I didn't mention during the talk, but that's what it is. That's what it's called. Now, he's about to embark on a, a quest, a philosophical quest. He's going to, going further in college, going into classic studies. This is a pivotal time for him. He was going to San Francisco to go up there to study, and that's where he went. That's why he's not here. I asked him, by the way, whether I could use this dream for tonight, and he said yes. Well, then where's the problem? Remember, we said, hey, there are some dreams, these transcendent, transpersonal dreams that go beyond the personal scope of a person's own existence and penetrate into the some world of beyond, and yet it can come back and open up the most fundamental problem a person may have. And that doesn't have to be necessarily confide only to the person. It can be a more general problem. So, what shall we say? While he was encouraged to talk some more, and he recognized that D, the person here, also has a very great interest in all of this, and that he did want to share it. I want to examine something a little more closely. That's what he said. But then he left. Then he left. 
he knew, he knew that this was disguised. This experience was disguised. I want to examine something. He didn't disclose at that moment that what he wanted to examine was this very experience and talk about it and share it so he could then examine it more closely with her since she happens to be also a very insightful woman and interested in the same kinds of subjects. So therefore, what did he do? I got up and left. Left. But this is a kind of, this is a kind of invitation, isn't it? It was only when he talked about the dream that he then disclosed that what that meant and what he meant to communicate was he wanted to examine this with her. And then couldn't, left. So here is a very transpersonal experience, goes beyond personal boundaries. Very significant, obviously, to have it. It tells you something fundamental about existence. He wanted to share it to someone who was very important to him, someone he may marry. Wanted to share it with her, but then got up and went off by himself. Is that a problem? Hmm? Since, since when he reflected and told us, in terms of the dream, he had to reflect more about the dream, he did mean to suggest to her that I want to examine this experience, not a little more closely, but as, but as completely as, an I, as I can with you. But then he left. Well, we asked him, what would it be like? What would it be like? And remember from last week, we said dreams deal with metaphors and similes. And we said that every figure in the dream is a metaphor for something. And when you treat the dream episode or scene as a simile, you can get a state of mind. So therefore, it was natural that I would ask at this point, what was it like when you knew you wanted to share something with her that was very significant to you, that instead you got up and you left? I said, so at that moment, what was it like? So he described in a bunch of nice words what it was like. And so I said, that's very interesting. Could you tell us when you experienced that most recently? And he said that he had been at the, with the family together, with D. They were together with his family. And it was very clear to the family, since they're, they have a religion, a modern religion. I don't know whether you're familiar with it. They hit small white balls and run after them. It's a religion. Tennis. Tennis. They wear white, their white clothes. It's very proper, and they go every time, and they bow before the... It's a whole ritual, you know, whole involvement. It's so... Then he then related. He said, he said, you know, he said, there I am. I'm going to now go up to San Francisco with this woman. And that was a major breakthrough for him, to have a girlfriend that he was willing to live with and perhaps marry and make this plunge into human relationships. But he couldn't tell them about her, even though she was there. He couldn't say anything. And he made this great remark. He said, now, he is a, he is a very skilled tennis player. The whole family are into tennis. And he said, I'll tell you, he said, what it reminds me of. He said, 
I have this great work I have to get into in Greek, in classic Greek. He said, I have to do the work. I had everything prepared that night. But then I went over to the TV and I turned on the television to watch the uh, major tennis matches that were just going on this weekend, the, B the US Open. And he said, I could watch it, I could study it. He said, I knew every single time they did it right, when they did it wrong, why they did it right, why they did it wrong. He's one of these people who are quite, a, quite, quite proficient in tennis. The whole family is. He said, he said, I don't know. He said, I knew I had this work over there. He said, but here I was doing this. And I said, well, it's a, isn't it true, though, that you are using your mind in a very skilled manner? making many, many distinctions. He said, yeah. He said, yeah. He said, I'm making many distinctions. He said, I'm making all kinds of judgments. See, those kind of judgments, had he made it in his study, he would have gained insights into the work he's doing. So therefore, you know, just wait for him to come to the conclusion. And he did. He said, my dad came up to me, he said, quite recently, I remember this, and he said, you know, if you give up tennis, we won't have anything to talk about. That's the only way he related with his son on the tennis courts. It's the only thing they talked about. It's the centerpiece of their home. That's why I jokingly called it a religion. It has that aspect. And therefore, he had to leave something that was very important to him, that was a, a major, he needs this to fulfill his academic goals. He has to get in these four or five weeks and do this project. He's not doing it. He's watching TV in the open, the U.S. Open. Right? He walked away from it. He really got involved in the Greek. He loved it. He couldn't go back to it. He had to leave it. Well then, look here. The dream master, giving him this dream, raised the whole thing, didn't it? Took the idea of learning classic Greek and applying it to this project he had and raised it as the most meaningful experience he ever had. And then showed him that even when this is the most meaningful thing, you still can't do it. Here's your problem. And unless he solves that problem, he's not going to be able to succeed in something that he really loves. So therefore, I was going to point out, as from the beginning, that this is the kind of a dream which goes beyond personal boundaries. It's transcendent, transpersonal. It's the goal of many great philosophers. And yet, the dream master is putting it into a context where he can then see his own fundamental problem. So, that's the first. Now that's a great dream with an attendant opening up to show its, its most meaningful direction in terms of the young man's own goals and, a, and the point in his life. Yes, do you have a question about it before I go on? Okay, all set? Next? All right. Next one. Hmm? Tiny. Then I'll have to read it. Um, it really starts here. This is an introduction. This comes from a written statement of a dream that was written, and I was given the, uh, the, the uh, dream. And this is literally the statement. Vivid in its realism, in its portrayal of life, yet today, looking at last night, I find the details that were so vivid to lack permanence in my memory. 
But one thing is clear, and that is its central import. That scene of splendor, but now only the scene that triggered the splendor is real. But yet, it's only a part. So this is a kind of reflection the next morning, the following morning. And here is the dream itself. There's an addition later, but this is the dream. I was reading an old book, and as my eyes fell on a certain passage, and while reading, my entire body became engulfed with pure, beautiful, penetrating, clear light, such that the unknown within me was flooded with crystal light completely transforming me. Accompanying this experience was an elevating, uplifting, vast feeling that carried me seemingly off the ground. It was not blissful in rapture or ecstatic pleasure, but a penetrating serenity which bathed everything and flooded my being. That's the dream. And the, this is the further material that was written that morning. I awoke and found myself in bed, calm, peaceful, not knowing which was real, being on the bed or the dream. I immediately thought that the experience could be relived. If only I could remember and recall the expression from that book, for that triggered the experience. I could again relieve, I could again relive it. Uh, I thought over and over again this statement, and I knew I would always remember it, for it was so much like Uspensky's quote from the Bible, and there will be time no longer. I fell asleep again, intent upon capturing and renewing the experience. Again, I found myself in dream, he says. But in finding the statement again, the feeling returned, except I became aware that perhaps I should not try to relive it again. This was artificial contrived, not sure it seemed right. Yet the feeling state returned upon, upon seeing the statement again. Only this was less intense with an accompanying feeling of reluctance, awoke and wondered, you shall find that there is, find that there is, and the dreamer didn't know which one it was or how it ended. Hmm. Pardon me? Yes, yes. What was added was, it was an old stone building made out of huge stone slabs. And there was a wise man, a classic kind of wise man, strong with knowledge, it was described in the dream, pointing to a long table where they were old books. He was pointing to one, and the dreamer said that in just turning his mind to it, the words appeared from the book in my mind. No. So it's not like reading it, it suddenly bounced into his mind. And that was the preceding quote. Now, using what we've done before, 
could we not say, again, we can just change a couple of small things? Right, we can change just a few things. It's a great dream, right, great dream. But something came up. And I'm, I didn't write two sentences down here I thought I'd save. Because I want to have a little fun. Fair enough? All right. The dream is over here. And then I awoke and found myself in bed calm, peaceful, not knowing which was real, being in bed or the dream. I immediately thought that the experience could be relived. If only I could remember and recall the passage, the expression from the book. For that triggered the experience. I thought it over and over again, this statement. And I knew I would always remember it. For it was so much like the Ospensky quote from the Bible, for there will be time no longer. What happened, you see, in the dream is the dreamer remembered this line, this part, and that was the, that was the part of the quote that was Ospensky's, but it wasn't the part of the dream. So the dreamer associated it with the Ospensky quote was able to recall the Uspensky quote, which is a quote from the Bible as well, and remember the association with it, not the original quote. Even though he's saying, oh, I will always remember it. So vivid. All right, that's the first one. I fell asleep again, intent about capturing and renewing the experience. Again, I find myself in the dream, in the whatever. At this point, the no, there are other notes in the, dream, in the dream statement, which is that at this point he doesn't know whether it was a dream or whether it was waking world, because he's in that twilight region between the two, and that's why the quotes around that word. Right. But in finding the statement again, he gets the statement again, the feeling returned, except I became aware that Perhaps I should not try to relive it again. This is in this. Um, the, uh, this is the only statement I have, right? So, it since the last statement was that he was in the dream, I can just deal with that. So in the dream, or quasi-dream, or the twilight zone between the two, perhaps I should not try to relive it again. Artificial, contrived, uh, not sure it seemed right. Pardon me? My doubts. That's to see the last two sentences. Remember I said the two sentences I'm holding back? Yeah, I wanted to keep it out. No, no, I wanted to keep it out. Yeah, it's to build up a little bit of suspension right here. Right? Puzzled him. Am I doing it? Oh, good, good, good. Okay, the feeling state returned. It was success. But this time it was less intense. And there are some other words that suggested it was luminous that have the same qualities. But there was a feeling of reluctance to participate in it as fully as he had before. Or that pulled him back, whichever way you want to describe it. Now, you shall find that there is, this is the statement he wrote of the original, what he thought was the original statement from the book. That's a different one, slightly different than the original. And so is this, find that there is. You shall find that there is, find that there is, this future. So, um, now, uh, in order to reflect with you and be fair to the, the dream and the dreamer, 
I'm going to give you two things, the several sentences that I mentioned, and this dreamer in this dream statement had two statements. One, 20 years later. <laughs> Recalling the dream. No, no. Oh. 20 years later, I have a statement of this dreamer where he is recalling this dream and he claims all kinds of things about it and adds material to it that isn't in the original dream. Well, I don't know there. It's not there, but I will fill you in on those points as well. Twenty years later, okay. he recollected it again okay. without reading the statement, okay. without reading it. I see. Years later. Yeah. Got it. All right. Okay. The particular two sentences that came up were. Um, now, keep the terms artificial, contrived, uh, feeling a reluctance, uh, artificial, contrived, not sure it seemed right. The quite interesting in this original statement were the concluding lines, which are. Um, the dreamer said that it was like knowing how to seduce his girlfriend and not wanting to go down that same road again. in the same way. Isn't that interesting? No, I, I haven't gotten that part yet. No, I haven't gotten that part yet. I'm going to hold it. I still have that to give you. Remember I said there were two sentences in the dream that I didn't reveal? And this is, this is what, what I didn't reveal earlier. All right. Then I'm going to add something to those. So therefore, he could tie in that reluctance because he said, in this it's saying that to go through, as it were, the same things would be contrived, mm -hmm. would be artificial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And rather than do it again, right, in the same way, was artificial and therefore pulled out of it. Now, was I like about this dream? Was he right and wrong? Like, let us assume for the moment that, let us say for the moment that he's correct about this. Right. Does that mean if it's correct here, he's also correct and not, not trying to do it and pulled out of it? Why not use a method? Why not use a method? He had the method, came to him. He was getting into it, was he not? Mm -hmm. Pulled out of it. Now, is that taking something from the personal world and allowing that to influence the way in which he's relating to the transpersonal and transcendent? Or, try the other one now. Was he right? Both. Going back now, remember we said that these transcendent dreams, right, they may occur, but they may also show 
a fundamental problem. Now, did this show him the fundamental problem? Does it give us, does it give us the fundamental problem? Can we share in that problem? Louder? You're forcing the experience. Well, you're certainly forcing the experience when... Um, forcing the experience? Forcing the experience? But definitely down here. I'm not too sure about up there. Yeah! I mean, why wouldn't you want to yeah. go down that road again? Pardon me? What's why wouldn't you want to go down that road again? What road? The one that you the girl experienced. Girl? No, I just wondered, did that fit? That's, thank you. I mean, that's the issue. Experience. That's the issue. I wouldn't mind wanting to go down that road again. Okay. In terms of the experience. Fine. In terms of the girl, though. Well, then you would say it's okay here, but... Yeah. Not here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. (laughs) 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 Therefore, hey, look, transcendental dreams, Mm -hmm. a whole class of them, give us the root of major personal problems, not just yours. Mm -hmm. Would you not agree we may have touched upon the kind of problem that many people have? Yeah, but you see, he returned to it. But in some way, it was less intense, and that feeling pulled him out of it. Less intense because he pulled himself back. That's true. That's absolutely correct. Yes, that's right. That's right. Is that what he's doing here, too? That's the issue, isn't it? Did he hold himself back here? Yes. Oh, yes. Was he right or wrong? And does that mean that 20 years later, he's still worried about this girl that he was... <laughs> Hey. What happened with her? That's right. That's right. Let's hear about that story. That's right. Really? Yeah. No, no. I'm saying, yes, that is the problem. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Then I said 20 years later, remember? Mm-hmm. There's some additional material. Mm-hmm. Well, I have the two. And, pers- and uh, I was quite amazed in, in looking at the two of them because... Uh, this material of the building and the wise man pointing to the books was not in the original statement. It was in this 20 years later statement. And also, uh, there was the statement that you shall find that there is this statement Uh, had an additional statement from the wise man pointing to the books saying, uh, you shall find in, in, as it were, great in, in these books, in these ancient books, all that there is. Right? Now, all this material is described quite vividly the 20 years later. It looks like it fits. The words appeared in my mind directly without having to read them. And in this 20 year statement is the statement that even though it occurred 20 years ago, It is as if it took place just the night before. It's still just as vivid and real now as it was 20 years ago. That was the opening lines to the statement. So, um, I enjoyed seeing the differences. Now, here we're dealing, first dream we dealt with, as is unfortunately the Um, individual uh, had to go to San Francisco 
no longer there. I have these two statements. And what would we like to know? What would we like to ask both dreamers? Let's first deal with this one. What, what would we first like to ask them? Because you see, these are really two dreams, not one. You see? This is the first dream. And it ends here, but at penetrating serenity, which bathed everything and flooded my being. I awoke, found myself in bed, right, immediately, right? This is the statement of the second dream. Therefore, what if we just stay with the first dream? Because these are two different dreams. The first dream is, would you not agree, from what we were doing? <clears throat> I was reading an old book, and as my eyes fell on a certain passage, see, part of that is there, my eyes fell upon a certain passage, that language like the words appeared in my mind. While reading, my entire body became engulfed with pure, beautiful, penetrating, clear light, such that the unknown with me was flooded with crystal light, completely transfiguring me. Accompanying this experience was an elevating, uplifting, vast feeling that carried me seemingly off the ground. It was not blissful in rapture or a static pleasure, but a penetrating serenity which bathed my, bathed everything and flooded my being. Now watch, that's moving from the images of light and ecstasy to a different kind of state of mind. Ah, look now, see? Dream number one, a penetrating, penetrating serenity, and bathed everything, and flooded my being. We do not agree, we do not agree that there's a curious shift that takes place in this dream flooded with crystal light, completely transfiguring me, accompanying this an elevating, uplifting, vast feeling that carried me seemingly off the ground. It What does the it refer to, you see? Is it what accompanies it? Or is it this? Is it this? Or is it uh, this, all of this that is accompanying, which is the it referring to? It's ambiguous, but let's watch it. It was not blissful in rapture or ecstatic pleasure, which we would associate with this, mm -hmm. as with the other, the other dream, very clearly it was ecstatic, blissful, and it was an intimately connected up with the luminous experience of the transfiguring light or transforming light. But here, it was not. It doesn't have that emotional or, or that bliss, but it does. Pardon? But there's an addition. You're comparing it with the, uh, 
other guy. Go ahead and, you know, make your point, though. Well, yeah. because this one is talking about it as transforming. That one wasn't, didn't have that characteristic. That's right. So there's, That's right. you know, so in this one, if it's transforming, then mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, it's a deeper state, it looks like. like okay. Fine. Right. Right. Then you see. The whole being. That's okay. the other person is yeah. watching it. Okay. We might be able to say, then, that the first dream we explored which was D and I, uh -huh. may reflect a certain stage. Uh -huh. And by these comments, for the first part of this, right. it can be a higher state. Right. And now we're asking whether or not this latter part, or the, maybe even the second part, or even the second part, that's right. Level. that's right, that's right, that's right. Okay. Then would you agree then what we have here is a shift, a very basic shift, depending upon this key word. Mm -hmm. Serenity. Penetrating serenity, bait everything flat might be. Not in a static. So just for the moment, I'm going to cons right? say uh, this looks like, this looks like one experience that he's describing in two in two steps rather than two separate experiences. Okay. Accompanying this uh, is a further series of distinctions within this. And again, it all depends upon this key word if. All right, therefore, all right, we have this, uh, let's call it the uh, crystal light transforming. Or call it the transforming crystal light. And accompanied it was this penetrating serenity, which bade everything fly to the being. Now, here, he's trying to get back into it, isn't he? And I have a question for you. And this is where it's going. All right, this is a this is a fun question. Here it comes. We're calling that one. All right, transforming crystal light, penetrating serenity, bathed everything, flooded my being. Right. Um, I'm inviting you to consider this as a kind of speculation. Does this state described in the way in which we just have? What, what curious language now allow a technique to gain access to it. OK, I'm staying on one word, penetrating serenity. Right. OK, consider that. <clears throat>
right? Penetrating serenity means there's no place in his state of mind or experience that lacks it. It's penetrating serenity, bathes everything, flooded my being. Now, in that, to gain that, I'm going to use a, perhaps a pejorative word here, but I, I need it. Uh, is this state consistent with uh, self manipulation? I, I can't, you have to do it louder, please. Does it listen to self-manipulation? Can it be molded? That's what, that's the question. Yeah. What does it look like? Uh, come on. What does it look like? Pardon? I don't understand that, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, you've experienced serenity, mm -hmm. have you not? Yeah. All right. Consider it in its totality, engulfing you completely. So you can extend it as ideally as possible. In that state, you think it's possible to achieve that by in some way forcing yourself, manipulating yourself into it. Right. Right. If yes, if no. Because our dreamer, our dreamer is saying, that he gained, right? According to the dreamer, which is now we're talking about the second dream, he tried to gain access to this, was able to participate in it to some degree, to some degree, but was reluctant because he saw himself in some way as manipulating, and that became to him artificial, contrived, Pulled out. So the question is whether it's his problem or, in fact, it is possible. And it's his problem of how he interprets what he's doing. Yeah, so it's not whether it's just possible because he already experienced it to some degree. Right. Right? By putting this value on it, he couldn't go any further. Now, is that because of what he did, or is that in the nature of that kind of an experience? He did. He dealt with the experience. Pardon me? He did. He dealt with the experience through his um, belief that what he was doing, that he was doing something that was perhaps not quite right. That's what he said. Yeah, right. Yeah. He felt, well, That's what he, he himself was the one who lessened the experience. That's right. That's right. Well, it's just a no, no wonder he used the word technique. Well, in the sense, technique often is artificial. Uh, it's learning something. It doesn't spring out of your nature. Do you consider, say, meditation? When, medi when, you are, when you are aware of the fact that you're doing something to achieve something, part of your consciousness knows that you are practicing something. It is not something that you're doing naturally. Like in learning a language, the great moment comes when you're able to drop translating and just speak it directly. Mm -hmm. And that's a great moment. By the way, that usually occurs at the same time when people begin to have dreams in that language. Mm -hmm. I'm the dream master. All right, let me raise the, raise the question once more, All right? Okay? Did the dreamer get an insight into the laws of, we'll call it for the moment, the divine, based upon his view of what is proper, or did he impose some view, a narrow view, 
that it's nothing wrong to do that in this world, and equally well, it's nothing wrong to do it here. Or it may not be good to do it here, but it's okay to do it here. Now, what is it pardon me? What is his dream showing That he believes that it's not okay. Well, the, the dream does report that. And when I asked the, the dreamer um, what he had been reflecting on for the last 20 years, he said it was this very problem. <laughs> 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 and I'd like to express it the way in which he did it, all right? All right, it's a real interesting way, and thank goodness there was enough coffee to get into it. So, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back here and find out. All right. <laughs> Uh, He's a patient now. Pardon? Me? <laughs> I, I don't want to forget what I was. What, what, oh, I'm, I'm trying to recall exactly what what it was said. Uh, That's why he was put. No, that, that, that. This was his concern, sir. Did I do right? Am I doing right by not seducing the divine in the same way as I had previously? Seducing the divine? Pardon me? I'm not responsible oh. for the quote. This, <laughs> this is his. We can make fun of him later and, and <laughs> do all kinds of jokes with him. Do you seduce the divine in the beginning of the dream? Right. First, do you see how this statement can come out of the dream? Yes. Yeah. In the other dream, remember, the young man is going to walk off and think about it, and concern himself, yeah. reflect on it quite closely, isn't he? He's going to examine it. Well. I wanted to show you this one because this is a 20-year examination. Hope <laughs> doesn't suffer from the same self-doubt when the tennis ball is glancing across the net. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other way. Why did I seduce that? I mean, what would you mean? Just do it. Yes, please. More? Just do it. Yeah. Well, but you see... Do right by not. Do you do right by not? The question just seems absurd to me. Oh, yeah. Well, thank goodness we can say that about someone else. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I don't want to make fun of it. That's, that's, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, uh, all this hemming and hawing he's been going through for 20 years. Well, I'm trying to figure out why. And to think that he has he has the capability to seduce the divine. <clears throat> if this if this logic fits, if this logic fits, would you not agree? His basics, if we can call that an ethic, is that he didn't want to do it the same way with his girlfriend. Remember? Is that the way? That's honorable. That he didn't want to seduce her by going through the same motions and the same things, as it were, do it the same thing twice. So he didn't want to seduce, so he didn't want to seduce her the same way as he had. Mm -hmm. 
Agree? Okay, yeah. All right. Isn't he applying that to this kind of experience? Yeah. Then yeah. he substituted. Well, I have uh, two more things to say about it, okay. right? so I've got to keep them in my pocket for a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> Doesn't that also assume that he had seduced the divine before? Well, did he? Did yeah. he or didn't he? Was well, he doing it? The divine well, was seducing no. him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was reading the book yeah, and the yeah. divine you know, came in and said, hey, you know, he was, you know, just you know, let the divine. <laughs> you know, what, what we needed, what, okay, what I needed was your presence because I can see you have the right question. Yeah. Isn't the right, perhaps the right question to ask this person? How do they know they seduced her? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why couldn't it be some other way of talking that doesn't have all of this? <laughs> Probably one is whether he did or not. <laughs> oh, whether the gas bill was induced to more than one. Oh, bless us. So, see, since you're quick at seeing that, it does represent his problem, doesn't it? And especially the fact, the point that you just made was, was uh, exactly correct. Uh, it works on the assumption that he is the active agent in this, and the other thing is passive, whether it's divine or a woman. And it's all his trickery that somehow did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if he were to do it the same way, it would be trickery. Mm -hmm. And uh, it leaves the it leaves Perhaps this kind of. His father has planted his seeds of doubt by saying, "Well, if you go and do what you want to do, then I won't have anyone to play with." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So yeah. This is, a, this is perhaps infected mm -hmm. his whole life. Yeah. Could could. Uh, could really be. Okay. Remember I said two more things? Yes. All right. <clears throat> what I found real fun about this is the reason I got this was because the person involved, uh, and I have this on all notes, it was fun to do, it was 20 years, 20 years, and 20 years. The original experience, the original experience took place. 20 years after I got this statement, there was a dream, right? and then 20 years, remember we got the additional material? Right. And it's been 20 years since that original statement, which is why the person shared it with me. 60 years ago? Well, uh, 40 old. So he had the dream. 20 years later, he made the additional statement. Uh -huh. 20 years after, he made the statement. Oh, okay. Right. Did you call him up right away? <laughs> 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 he needs some help. He, he's still persisting. <laughs> still time. So what's his second statement? <laughs> now that we got Now you want to know the he, second statement. Yeah. Is he still years? working on it? <laughs> <laughs> now remember, what is it, what is it that the person would be doing? Uh, if he were still involved in this, he would still hold back, would he not? Yeah. yeah. And not participate in it under these kinds of conditions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, so uh, he said, uh, um, as great as that was, I've gone beyond it. No. Is that interesting? Not worried about seducing. Yeah, it's a gone. And then I did, though. I did. That's the next part of it. I said, "Well, did you ever then use this as a method in the twenty years, this period?" And he said, "Yes." He then built that into his meditations. He's a Buddhist monk. Yeah. yeah. That was a, a large change. <laughs> so the girl is no longer waiting. That's no, I, I don't. I don't <laughs> think that. Not her anymore. No, I mean, forty years is a long time to wait for this cookie. 
That's quite true. So that's what I wanted to do this evening, talk to you about great dreams and the problems they bring up. So Would you be able to do meditation again? He built that technique. Yeah, what does that mean? Yes. Yeah, I mean, because that, that's a little vague to me, of just serenity. And he used that as the technique to reach the divine, to seduce the divine. Well, it's good that you're mentioning that because um, I am not at all convinced when I talk to him or when I'm looking at this material, mm -hmm. that they're the same. Mm -hmm. They're separate dreams. These are two different dreams, one and two. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. And the struggle to get, in the dream, he's struggling to get back in state one. Right. But that's a dream about state one. Um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know whether, um, even, see, uh, let me see if I can show it to you. Even though some words suggest it's the same, there are other words that suggest it isn't. <clears throat> yeah. We're familiar with this now. All right, keep this in mind. Does it look like he's approaching this experience? I fell asleep again, intent upon capturing and renewing the experience. Again, I found myself in the dream, but in finding the statement again, the feeling returned, except I became aware that perhaps, it doesn't look like you got in the same experience. It's a, now it's a feeling. Now it's a feeling. It doesn't look like it's... And uh, we're putting a lot of stress now on one word, feeling, suggesting that's different. And um, that's there, it's there. So I think that's, that's an ambiguity and, and uh, if we could get the chap here, which we're not gonna be able to, uh, it would be fun to ask him a couple more questions. But either of them. That's right. Dream. The first Louder? one has non-personal, non. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jason's still with me here tonight. Has he been in this class? He's a monk. I don't think so. Oh, I thought you said from. No, no. The first stream we did. Yes, he was here. He has been here. Yes, but not this chap. No, I don't think. Maybe way back when. So. Yeah, in fact, the last sentence is that this didn't have a, a feeling state to it, the first dream. That's right. It didn't have that quality. Uh, no. It wasn't rapturous, it wasn't blissful, it wasn't... Uh, or it's assumed, you see, or it's oh, assumed. You'd have to explore And you'd have to get more material out of them. But I don't know how reliable it would be to try to get material out of a dream that is, let's see, Zero and zero, zero two and two is uh, four. Four, yeah, four <laughs> years. <laughs> <again. laughs> oh yeah, I can. There's a certain sense where you lose the reliability of recollection <laughs> when it goes beyond what 35 years. <laughs> there's 35. But it does present these things. I was very interested in showing it to. Nice. They were great dreams. Incredible. They really were. Pardon me. They were incredible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Now, how do we seduce the divine in order to have a dream? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, this guy's worried about seducing. We don't mind. <laughs> we don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, <laughs> we just, so, what's interesting about this, it may be that solving that personal problem may be more important than that beatific experiment. Mm -hmm. I hesitated that. Or maybe it's equally valid. But it's certainly the dream master is bringing in the individual mm -hmm. in the second dream, not the first. Mm -hmm. Because this one, it doesn't have any of that anywhere in it. It's the dream master all the way. Yeah. Yeah, but do it again. 
it's just the dream master all the way. Yeah, this is, yeah. in a sense, pure, isn't yes. it? Yes. Opening the door to his nature. Yeah, yeah. And, he, um, and yeah. this, the individual, is turning on the spigots and turning on the dials and a different class of reflection, a different mm -hmm. class of involvement. Of course, that was spontaneous, and this is kind of contrived. But. Yeah, right, I have a the huh. <laughs> Well, so, that's fun. Thank you. Well, thank you. Good. Yeah.